It's likely that if you've been doing any sort of front-end development for any period of time, that you've worked with someone else's designs. It's also likely that the person whose designs you've worked with is not fully aware of the limitations of the rectangular nature of the web world. And in these cases, you may have been handed a design something like this and then been expected to convert it into HTML and CSS. And when cases like these arise, you'd go back and forth with the designer to come up with something more suitable for the web. Something like this, where the content is contained within boxes, which doesn't really look quite as nice. Well, with shapes, you may not have to do that any longer. We could simply leverage what we know about shapes to convert this into HTML and CSS. So how do we do it? Well, we start by adding some basic HTML. In an attempt to keep you from falling asleep by hand typing all this HTML, I'll start with this code. We can see that this is the entire document for our page. We have the element for our first shape, which will be the left side of the Y, which will control how content flows on the left hand side of the Y. Next, we have an element here for the bear's head. And then we have another element here on the right hand side for the right hand side of the Y, which will control how the content flows on that side. And just like the HTML, to speed up the process, I've added some basic CSS to get things like typography, spacing, and basic layout set up. So if we look at this page in our browser, we can see that we are already in the ballpark. And if we weren't using shapes, we would probably just add a little margin and stuff and then maybe stop here. But we are using shapes, so let's do it. First, let's examine our images a little closer. Remember that in order to use an image for our shape, we will need to have some transparent pixels. There, so now our images are good to go. So how do we set up our content to flow around the edge of the image? Right, we use the shape outside property with the URL to our image, something like this. Okay, so now how does this look? Nice, it flows around the edges of our images pretty nicely. We probably want to add a little space, so let's give it a shape margin. And there we go, that looks pretty nice. Now, we actually could have done this another way. Instead of using the URL to our image, we could have used the polygon function and actually drawn the shape that we need. Let's look at how we would do this instead. Something to note here before we get too far along. The majority of time when using the polygon function, you'll want to use some other tool to visually create the shape. These shapes are oftentimes much more complicated than you'd ever want to try to hand create. And we'll get into some of the tools that will help with this in the next module. So for the purposes of this example, I've already used an external tool to create the polygon shape that I want. So I'll just paste it in here. So here we can see a whole bunch of X and Y coordinate pairs. And how does this look in the browser? Pretty good. I mean, again, it looks like we need to add a little bit of shape margin, so let's go ahead and do that. There, much better. Now this looks very similar to the image version. So by now you may be asking yourself, why would you want to use the polygon over the image? Well, you won't always want or need to, but there are at least two guiding factors to help you decide. One, if you have any sort of image where you want to keep the full image and just have text wrap around a specific part and overlay on top of the rest, something like this for example, this is a prime candidate for polygon since it does not require any sort of transparency. And number two, the URL function is not animatable like polygon. Meaning if we want to perform any sort of animation or transition on our shape, we will have to use one of the shape functions. That's right, shapes created with shape functions are animatable CSS properties. Now before we go any further, let's get a couple of things out of the way. Notice how I said shapes created with shape functions can be animated. Well that's because shapes created using images cannot be animated or transitioned to another image or shape. For example, let's take this image and try to apply a transition to this other image on hover. Our code looks something like this. As you can see, here we start by defining our shape with the first image. 
then on hover we transition to the next image. And when we look at how this works in our browser, we see that the hover image shape is used, but the transition is not applied. So you'll need to be mindful of this when animating shapes. Also, if animating a polygon, you will need to make sure that the polygon shape that you're animating to has the exact same number of points as the polygon that you're animating from. For example, if we take this star, which has 10 points total, and then remove one on hover, and then try to transition between these shapes? Well, like the image, we see that the new shape is triggered on hover, but the transition is ignored. So in order to actually be able to animate shapes, we have to keep it as simple as possible. For example, here I have an ellipse that defines a perfect circle. I'm actually using an ellipse in this case because I want to stretch it out on hover, and I want to transition the stretch over one second. So I add my transition, then I add my new radii for X and Y. I kept the X radius the same and I stretched the Y radius out. So as we can see, it will now transition between its original shape and its new shape on hover. Now let's take a look at a more complicated example. Let's say we have a star. It uses the polygon function and has a total of 10 points. So we can transition this on hover to something like a decagon, which also has 10 points. So here we add our hover state with the new shape. Then we add our transition. And when we look at it in the browser, we can see that the star will perfectly transition between the two shapes and the flow of content will be transitioned around the new shape. And if we really want to transition to a different shape with a visually different number of points, we can do that too. We just have to sort of fake it. For example, what if we wanted to transition this star into a diamond shape? Well, we know our star has 10 points, and if we think about a diamond, it only has four points. So how can we make this work? Well, we just have to transition these 10 points in a manner in which they will create a diamond. So here's some code that will make it happen. And when we look at that in the browser, we can see that the star with the 10 points will transition into a diamond that appears to only have four points, but in reality it has 10. And how about our original example with the bear transitioning into the bobcat on hover? Well, we now know that we can do this with polygons. And here's how it looks. <laughs> 